Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at doing calculations. So um, let's say I've got some people and their average height is one point, let's say, six, seven meters. So double height equals 1.67. Now let's say I want to know, I've got seven of these people and they're, they're performing acrobats and they're going to all stand on each other's shoulders. And I want to know how high seven of them will be standing on each other's shoulders. So I could just write sys out height times seven. Or if I, if I like, I could write seven point naught. Here it makes no difference. And if I run that, I find that the answer is seven of them on top of each other are going to be 11.69 meters high. Now, what I could also do is I could write double, let's say, result equals height times seven. And then I could output the result. Let's run this and we should get the same, well, the same result. Okay. Uh, now, uh, there, there is one thing that beginners often tend to do, which is a bad idea, which is that beginners are liable to give variable names, really short letters like R. Occasionally that's appropriate, uh, typically when you're using mathematical equations and the convention is that you would use, for example, an X or a Y, then it makes sense to just use one letter. But most of the time, don't give variables one letter names because it gets very confusing. Another thing is, in general, don't give variables vague names. So here I've written result. What does that mean? It, it really tells me nothing about... Um, what I'm actually doing here. So it would be better to give it a more specific name. Give it the most meaningful name that you can. You can also even use multiple words in your variables. So I could create a variable called total height. And what I do is by convention, uh, in the convention that Java usually uses, uh, the first word in your variable has a lowercase first letter. So the variable starts with a lowercase first letter. But any word after that has an uppercase first letter. So total height will be written like this. That makes it easy to read. And it's also meaningful. So it, on, on, if, okay, if you don't know exactly what you're calculating, you're just kind of making something up to see how it goes, then it might make sense to write result here. But if you possibly can, give your variable a meaningful name. It's better to make it excessively long than to make it excessively cryptic by making it too short and too meaningless. It makes your programs a lot easier to read. Okay, so we're, we're here creating the total height of seven people stood on top of each other. Now, supposing they also have a flagpole. The height of the flagpole are defined in another variable. So like this, uh, double flagpole height, let's call it equals, um, let's say the flagpole is 2 metres high. I'll write 2.0. And in fact, this height here, well, that's not very meaningful because now I've got multiple heights in my programme. I want to change it so that um, we have this height and this height, wherever I've used height, I want it to say person height. Rather than do that by hand, since I've got multiple versions of it, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to source and I'll go to, um, no, sorry, I'm going to go to refactor. So right click it, go to refactor, rename and type a new name. So I'm going to type here person height and it, it corrects all of all of my variables that are called height. It, it corrects the specific variable that I want to change. Okay, so we've got the height of a person. We've got a flagpole height. We're calculating the total height of seven people on top of each other. And I also want to add the height of the flagpole on top because I want to know how high the whole thing is. Seven people on top of each other and the top one is waving a flagpole, holding it presumably by the very end of it using his or her fingertips. Let's run this. I've got to save it first. And 
so this this is what we originally have at 11.69 so if i add the flagpole height we should get 13.69 let's add that in plus flagpole and to save me typing out the variable i can hold down control and press space and then it brings up a list of suggestions and i can hit return to select the first one okay let's let's run this and now we get 13.69. One last thing I want to bring to your attention is that this looks ambiguous, this expression, because does it mean person height times seven and then add the flagpole height, or does it mean person height times seven plus the flag flagpole height? So you could add seven to the flagpole height and then multiply the person height by that. Or you could add seven to person height and then add the flagpole height. There are things, there are rules called um, operator precedence rules, which we're going to talk about a bit. But for now, when you have an expression like this, and this is really good practice anyway, put round brackets in to make it less ambiguous. So if I put round brackets around this part, that makes it clear that I'm adding, s multiplying the person height by seven, and after that I'm adding the flagpole height. Hopefully you understand what I mean, because the other the other thing that we could have done instead is I could add seven to the flagpole height and multiply the person height by that, but that gives us something else. It's not what we want in this case. Here we get 15.03, but what I want is to add the person height, mu sorry, multiply it by seven and then add the flagpole height. Let's run this. Okay, soon I'm going to give you an exercise with this, but there was a lot in that video. Um, so what I would recommend is that type this out yourself and run it and get it working, and then make up your own little program. Think of something you could calculate, no matter how silly. Uh, we're, we're not standing on pride here. It's good to experiment with silly ideas. Think of something you could calculate and try to calculate it. And let's put a comment on here, in here, with two slashes. And I'm going to write, calculate height of seven people plus a flagpole. There we go. Okay, try that for yourself and then try to make up a little program that does a calculation and see how you get on. And until next time, happy coding.